Hello, this is Janet Michael. In addition to hosting The Valley today each weekday at noon on the River 95.3, I also produce podcasts, and I'm excited to introduce you to a new podcast series in partnership with Lord Fairfax Community College. Having provided higher education and career training for the past half century, LFCC is tightly interwoven into the fabric of the Northern Shenandoah Valley and Piedmont regions. Join me every week for conversations with current and former students to hear their funny and inspiring stories as we learn about their journey to higher education, the role that LFCC has played, where they are now, and where they plan to go. We'll also talk to current and former professors about their experiences and best memories of LFCC over the past 50 years. Get every single episode as they're released on our website at theriver953.com under the podcast tab, or you can subscribe for free in Apple Podcast, Google Podcast, on Spotify, Amazon Music, wherever you listen to podcasts. Just search for LFCC Stories. Hello and welcome to The Valley Today. I am your host, Janet Michael. Happy Tuesday. As you are listening to the show today, it is Tourism Tuesday, Berryville, Clark County edition. And I am not pre-recording over Zoom. I'm pre-recording, but I am pre-recording in person again. This is like the third or fourth time. I am so excited to be getting back out. And I am at the barns of Rose Hill in Berryville. Morgan Morrison is here with me along with Sarah Ames. And as excited as I am, y'all are even more excited because you're celebrating an anniversary this year. Year. That's right, 10 years. Can you even imagine? It's I, it's crazy. Yeah, it's been it's a, crazy. Yep. It's, it's been a, a long road. It's been great and we're happy to still be here. Well, and I asked you, Morgan, before we started recording for the show, how long you had been here and you said you'd been here nine years, but you actually played as part of when the barns actually opened. That's right. We played, I feel like we even played before the barns opened outside the barns for a celebration and then I think it was one of the first, if not the first, concert indoors, along with a couple other bands. I'm trying to think of who they were right now. I can't remember. It was a decade ago. It was, yeah, <laughs> right. 10 years ago. <laughs> um, but yeah, I remember walking in here and just being, I was, I would go to the park with my daughter at, at the time, or, or at the time, yeah, she's still my daughter. She was a, li- <laughs> a little kid then. She was three years old. and. We would, you know, two, two and three, and we'd watch the construction and just have no idea what this place was like on the inside and walking in here and being like, oh, I cannot believe this is here. This is incredible. And it is huge. It, you don't really realize it, I think, because you can't really see it when you're driving down Main Street necessarily. You have to kind of loop around to the government center and come in you still don't realize just how massive this place is and how beautiful it is on the inside, even though it's still gorgeous on the outside. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's yeah. it's tucked away. It's funny. So many people, we even get phone calls from the parking lot. Like, where's the barn? <laughs> like, just look at the big gray barn at the end of the park. But once you see it and you're like, how could you have missed it? Oh, yeah. I still, as many times as I've been here, I still forget and start through the drive through Mm-hmm. And then after, oh, wait, that's not how I go. I just need to park in the parking lot. Yeah, exactly. That's how you <laughs> yeah. can tell the people that have been here for the first time you see them driving around through the drive through <laughs> a couple times. <laughs> so tell me about this anniversary celebration because y'all got all kinds of stuff planned. Yeah, so it's so we're kicking off really the, the anniversary celebration with a big community concert. And we've got some crafts and a bunch of different stuff going on. And that's going to happen Saturday, July 31st. So it's a free concert right between us and the municipal building. And there's a big field there. So we're going to have a nice big stage set up, have some food trucks, arts and crafts for the kids. We're going to do an instrument petting zoo. So folks will, and kids will be able to have an opportunity to, to you know, get their hands on some instruments, check things out. And then in the barns, of course, it's going to be sort of open house style. So we're going to welcome folks in, um, especially folks who have never been here. It's a great chance sort of check it out and it's really the great hall is going to be set up to celebrate so many of the accomplishments and the help that we've had along the way 
And then our lower gallery, we do have an exhibit set up. So our artists will be here on the 31st as well. So it's going to be a fun, a fun day. And this is a, this is part celebration for 10 years, but it's also part thank you to the community Absolutely. and the supporters. Absolutely. And that's, and it's, you know, we're, we're handing out ice cream and, you know, the concerts away for the Barnes of Rose Hill as an organization to not only thank um, our community of supporters, but also to, you know, it's a celebration of our community. It's, you know, that's such an important part of what rural art centers are and what they mean to the communities that they serve. And Berryville and Clark County, I mean, it's our family. And so <laughs> it's, it's a way that we're able to celebrate with everybody because it's a lot of hands have got us to this 10 year point. So Morgan, two years ago, before we ever even heard of what a pandemic might be like, and you're thinking, okay, we're coming up, we've got two years and we're gonna be celebrating 10 years. And then all of a sudden here comes 2020. What did you think was going to be able to happen for this anniversary? Did you think you were even going to be able to have it? I mean, of course, you know, initially when everybody was saying everything would be closed for two weeks, it didn't seem like <laughs> that big of a deal, yeah, big of a deal. But obviously, like, yeah, six months, eight months, nine months, a uh, year into it, still not with so much uncertainty. We were sort of facing that very real question of are we even going to be able to have people in here or do anything for the 10 year anniversary. So that was scary. And then, but of course, you know, we came out on the other end of it, which is yet another reason to celebrate. We're still here and sadly, a lot of venues are, are not. So, you know, something else to celebrate. Well, and we had conversations, I think early on and then midway through the pandemic, y'all did an amazing job of making the pivot, of figuring out, okay, what can we do to survive and still provide some sort of entertainment and respite for those of us that were still trying trapped inside of our houses, you really stepped up to the plate when it came to that. Yeah, we were quick. We were quick to do that. Um, it's we thought it, I mean, me and my husband are both musicians, so we immediately started doing live streams and then applying that all that to the barns. And and, you know, as a team, I think we all work really well together. So we were just immediately on that. And also knowing that there was such a need for that, I think people feeling so isolated in their homes, you know, there's a lot of anxiety associated with that and being able to kind of relieve some of that anxiety by providing, you know, music and, and arts, you know, albeit virtually, but, you know, we did it. Well, and the isolation and anxiety is going to be gone come July 31st. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> exactly. Well, and, you know, the, the mission of the Barnes is to enrich lives through the arts, education, and community. And so, you know, in March, I think I've got a little bit of PTSD. I don't really remember March 2020, but one thing, you know, the end result from all of our conversations, it's like we have to do something. You know, yeah. this organization was built to be out there and be able to provide the happiness and the music and the art when people need it. And mm -hmm. this is when people need it. So, and, and for us, it's worked out great. We've got a whole new fan base and we're so excited <laughs> to be able to say, hey, you get to actually come and check us out in real life now. And you were in a unique position too because of the size of this building. You were able to do a few things that some of the other smaller venues couldn't pull off even if they had the capability and the volunteers and the staff to do it otherwise. That's right. We, we eventually, I mean, of course, initially everything was live streamed. We had artists doing it from their homes and then when they felt comfortable coming in because there's a lot of separation between the stage and the sound the sound man Nathan and everyone was masked and we would do these live streams and then eventually we went to like 20 people then to 30 people then to 40 and now we're happy to say we're at 100 and the first couple shows with those big audiences it was very emotional I think Sarah and I were both surprised that the fact that we started crying as soon as we came into the room and how about the people that were attending oh I mean did oh they God. stop you on the way out and just it, it has been for everybody you know the small audience sizes it's a little jarring at first um, in in different ways so first the first time you set up 20 chairs in here when our capacity is about 180. So you set up 20 chairs and you're looking around and in some ways it's heartbreaking. In other ways, then as soon as people start filling those seats and the energy is still there, mm -hmm. the interaction with the artist is still there. 
And our last show, you know, our first big show, actually, excuse me, that was at the beginning of June where we are actually, we were at about 55% capacity. So at a hundred, a hundred people is a lot of people (laughs) when you're not used to having anybody in here. I think that's the other thing. Our whole perspectives were colored during COVID. So everybody was great. Everybody was, you know, should we wear masks? You know, they were being very supportive. They wanted to make sure that everybody was comfortable. And like Morgan said, you know, she arrived a little bit later, but when Christian Lopez, the the musician who was playing, when he started, I was at the back looking at all of those heads and I, it was just tears. (laughs) And I think it's a combination of, you know, the power of music for sure, but also something that I wouldn't say I took for granted, but it's definitely amped up, is the power of a shared experience. and you don't get that. I mean, I love going to a bar and listening to a band, but with everybody talking and everyone's having a very different experience right. in a setting where people aren't just focused on the music or focused on the speaker. There's something about that, particularly post-pandemic, that shared experience of a large group of people that's very, it's, I mean, I would say for me, it's spiritual. It's, you know, it, it's, <laughs> it's like my, my church, you know. And I think you're going to find when you have this celebration on July 31st, you're going to have people that are coming out that maybe didn't come at all during the pandemic because they were afraid or they had medical issues or they had all of these other things that were keeping them at home or away from things and places like this. And suddenly now they're going to feel free. They're going to have the same reactions that those people did when there were only 20 of them in the room. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. It's, and I mean, it's, it's a beautiful space. We can't, I cannot brag on our facility (laughs) enough, you know, where I am so fortunate that we, we get to be stewards of a place like this. So it was, it's a combination of a lot of things, you know, a, a beautiful facility, amazing sound, you know, audiences where we haven't been, uh, you know, where we haven't had them in over a year. That was a long time. <laughs> yeah. So it's, yeah. and we're, we're, we're excited that we're gradually moving to, you know, our, our summer programming, our fall programming, you know, we are, we're hitting the ground running and we're looking forward to having folks back in. So this is a free community concert. It's a free event on July 31st. What time does it start? So uh, the activities actually start at five and the concert is going to start at seven. So we've got a couple food trucks. We've got, like I mentioned, the activities and stuff for the kids and all of that's going to run from about five to seven. Kids activities will probably wrap up about eight o'clock and then uh, seven o'clock is when we'll start our, our big concert. And I'll let Morgan. Yeah. So who who's on deck? Yeah. So Shea Kamala. He's from West Africa, and he plays the Nagomi, which is the well, it's the original banjo. I would say the predecessor to the banjo, but it is a banjo. It's the African banjo. Uh, as a lot of people know, the banjo is from Africa, and it's just he's. I love that he's coming because first of all, he was one of the first artists that played uh, when we were when the place opened, and he also represents. His music represents so much of what we love because we do a lot of world music and we do a lot of Appalachian music. So we have this, you know, it's all it's all in there. Shea Kamala and he's from he lives in DC now. So he's semi local. And uh, yeah, it's gonna be a great time. It's very upbeat, fun, energetic music. Well, I tell you what, let's take a break. When we come back, can we talk about some of the summer programs, the fall programs? I know you've got a film series that's coming up that starts tonight, actually. So can we get details for all that in the next segment? Definitely. We'll be back in just a couple of minutes. We are pre-recording today live on tape, I guess, like Stephen Colbert (laughs) says. We are live on tape from the Barnes of Rosehill in Berryville. I am chatting with Morgan Morrison and Sarah Ames from the Barnes. We're going to chat more with them when we come back in just a couple of minutes. Got a financial decision to make or a goal to reach, but you don't know where to start? You come to the right place. Introducing Quick Money Chats with the Northern Shenandoah Valley Financial Education Program. Visit tinyurl.com backslash quickmoneychat to schedule a virtual chat with a staff member or trained volunteer. We won't tell you what to do, but we will give you the tools you need to choose wisely. And because Virginia Cooperative Extension is part of Virginia Tech and Virginia State, your land-grant universities, you can be sure that our information is credible and trustworthy. And you'll know that we aren't trying to sell you something. Maybe you want to improve your credit score or reduce your banking overdraft fees, or even figure out if you can afford to buy that car. Sorting through tons of information on the internet can be overwhelming and sometimes it can be hard to know who to trust. Schedule a quick money chat and get the information you need to take action. 
Go to tinyurl.com backslash quick money chat and get financial education personalized for you. Welcome back to the Valley today. I am your host, Janet Michael. Happy Tuesday. As you are listening to the show today, it is Tourism Tuesday, Berryville, Clark County edition. We didn't even have to wait, Morgan, for an extra Tuesday in the month, which is normally when Clark County rolls in yeah. to Tourism <laughs> Tuesday because you reached out forever ago. I've got you slated for a whole nother show right. later this year. So kudos to you for being on top of things. <laughs> <laughs> so we talked in the first segment with you and Sarah about the 10 year anniversary. It's happening July 31st free community concert, kids activities, food trucks, ice cream, all of the cool stuff. But Sarah, you mentioned a couple of things in the first segment I want to touch on. You mentioned that there is going to be an exhibit that is open. And then you said something about summer and fall programs. I know Morgan, some of those are required tickets. Some are free. Where do we start? I mean, there's so many things. Yeah. yeah. So uh, the Lee Henry exhibit, which is currently down in our lower gallery, is the exhibit that is actually going to be up on July 31st. Uh, the doors to the barns will be open so folks will be able to come in and take a look at the exhibit the other wonderful thing is that lee henry the artist is going to be in attendance as well so it's a great opportunity for families and folks to come in and not only check out a really great exhibit that's summer themed it's wonderful the timing is perfect but also to walk through it with the artist you know it gives you a very different perspective and that should be that should be fun i hope a lot of folks take advantage of it yeah that in and of itself is like the coolest thing ever because it's one thing to walk through a museum and see something that someone else conceived of and then put to paper or on canvas or anything else but to be able to hear that artist say this is what I was thinking and this is how I came up with it is phenomenal exactly yeah 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 so we're, we're excited to have her we're thrilled that she's going to be here and it's a it's a great opportunity and it's it's a great exhibit that folks young and old will definitely appreciate and you know getting getting that perspective from the artist makes such a such a difference it puts that personal you know that personal touch on every piece of art down there knowing the story behind it makes makes all the difference in the world well and especially if you have children for example who want to be artists or are creative in any way the ability for them to come in and meet her and talk to her and realize this is a real thing and I could do this when I grow up is going to have an impact on some of these kids yes. for years mm -hmm. and especially and, and probably one of the biggest benefits to rural art centers like the Barnes is that exact thing you know you think about how many times children especially children that are you know that are angling towards the arts in a lot of ways how many times they hear that that's not a career and that you won't make any money doing yeah it. how is that and, gonna pay yeah. yeah exactly and to and to be able to say hey yeah this this is how it can happen Oh, and I've got dozens of people that I can say, well, why don't you go talk to this person and this person and this person? Because they're doing very well mm -hmm. as an artist. <laughs> right, right. So, yep. so Morgan, tell me about some of the other events that you've got coming up. Some require tickets, some are free. Yeah, so, I mean, we have we have a lot of concerts coming up. I'm really excited about Emmy Sunshine. She's coming back. She's great. She's a country, kind of a country Americana, uh, original songs. She was on American Idol, if anybody saw the recent... American ah. Idol. She made it to the showstopper round, which is impressive. Wow. And she did great, but you know, it's a stiff competition. But she's also like a child prodigy, basically. Plays ukulele, writes her own song. She's amazing. And she's, she'll be here on August uh, 13th. We have the Appalachian Chamber Music Festival, New Beginnings. It's a whole, it's a whole music festival that's going to Harper's Ferry, but they're going to do their first show here on August 19th. And, and then again, that's it really marries a lot of what we do here because we do the classical and we mm -hmm. also do the, the Appalachian. And this is kind of the marriage of the two. So that's going to be really exciting. We have Jordan Tice coming up, who is August 21st. And he is a amazing guitar player. If you love the guitar, you'll love Jordan. He's, he does flat picking. He does finger style. He's a great songwriter, great singer. And that's a solo show. I love all the shows here, but the solo shows I really love because it's such an acoustically tight space and, and it's one person oh. and you're really connected to them when they're performing exactly yeah and uh, the, like sarah was saying christian lopez did the first show here with a big audience and just really being able to hear that voice and that and that instrument and what they're doing stripped down to the you know to just them is, is amazing and also we do have a lot of free events coming up tonight 
we're actually doing the fantastic Mr. Fox, which I chose. It's one of my favorite movies <laughs> that the whole family will be able to enjoy. It's great for adults and kids, and it's free. And that starts at 7 o'clock. We'll have popcorn and snacks and sodas for sale. Um, and we are, uh, so three consecutive Tuesdays. And the Tuesday, the 20th, we're going to do the, the film Soul, which is another beautiful film. Again, these are all, you know, great for young, young and old and in between. And then we have July 27th, we're doing Spirited Away. And then, of course, we have trivia nights. We have every other Thursday, starting with the first Thursday of the month, we do the jam sessions. Exhibit openings, and we're doing Peter and the Wolf which is really exciting. We oh, already wow. have a lot of people signed up, so make sure if you want to come to that, you you, you sign up early. Charlie Brown Christmas, we're doing pictures with Santa. Wait, whoa, 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 back up. Charlie Brown Christmas? Yeah. It is a probably one of the most popular things mm -hmm. that we do. So folks need to, I know it sounds crazy, but reserve your spots early for that one. Definitely. Because it will, it will, we will reach capacity well, oh, wow. well before the show. Yeah, yeah, Charlie Brown is my jam. I mean, that's what we, that's what's playing we on the television do. when we're decorating the tree. My kid is 27 years old yep. and we still put a Charlie Brown Christmas on the TV and that's what's going yes. on and I'm dancing around so and I'm doing we, the line of speech. I yeah. mean, it is, we, it is, um, we show the film and then we follow that up immediately after with the Eric Bird Trio, which is a jazz trio from Washington, D.C., and they play through the score of the music. Oh yeah, the, it, Vince, Vince Giraldi wrote yes. the, the score, as you probably know, and they play the whole, the the whole entire thing. soundtrack. It's amazing. We've got kids dancing in the, ha in the <laughs> aisles. It's, it's, really, it's really a great, great event. Now, is that just one night, or is it a couple of nights? typically well it's we only have one scheduled we've talked about if it, it fills up because it was it was pandemic times when we scheduled it we were like <laughs> well two is a little ambitious but but actually that we may end up doing a second one but for now there's only one night so be sure to sign up yeah, yeah, that's that is so way cool. And I'm guessing that a lot of your concerts, especially the ones that you just mentioned, are going to sell out faster now than they probably ever did before because of the year that we're coming out of. Mm -hmm. We are selling tickets quickly to everything. Oh, and definitely uh, in September, we do the Patsy Cline tribute. And that's that's the big one. People need to get their tickets for that in advance. We do we do do two shows and we may add a matinee. So but for sure, I. I mean, all of them, people should get their tickets in advance just in case. And where can they get tickets for any of the stuff that we've talked about other than the free things? Uh, from our website. And also you can call and order tickets as well. And you can come in in person. Now, are you doing, uh, even though it's a free event like the film series, do you still need to register or RSVP? I know for a while we were all concerned about head counts, even for free events. We're kind of out of those woods now, but do you still want to know? Yeah, so uh, there are definitely things that uh, if you if you go to barnesandrosehill.org and check out the events, even some of the free events will have a place where you can register in advance. Morgan mentioned Peter and the Wolf, and that's in November, and we already have a lot of like a lot of people that have reserved their spots for that. That's one that we, we will definitely reach capacity on. Charlie Brown, a lot of the holiday stuff, even though it's you know, so check and if you can. I would go ahead and <laughs> reserve the reserve the spot for sure. Peter and the Wolf, it's actually, we're really excited about it. Just to talk about that for a minute or two. It's actually, it's a, a family concert that's being presented free through a grant from the Mary Park Lewis Foundation. And that is, it's going to be the, the full Peter and the Wolf score. And Garrick Zoder, who is a an amazing conductor, and he is on staff at Shenandoah University, he will be uh, conducting the chamber orchestra for that event so, nice. uh, so if you've got kids that are interested or kids that you want to be make, interested <laughs> foster an interest in classical music it's going to be really fun we're going to do some puppets some fun things prior to the show and then they will be able to hear the full the full score performed so it's going to be really cool yeah that's going to be awesome mm -hmm. and if you want to go if, if you go to our website which is www.barnesofrosehill.org You'll see there's um, ticketed events, there's free events, classes and workshops, exhibits. It's all there so you can see what's coming up. And just hit one and then go to the next and then go to the next That's and right. sign up for everything. <laughs> exactly and right. we are always adding, especially with the programming for this year. Poor Morgan. It's been like... <laughs> 
this has not been an easy thing to program. We kind of laughingly, sort of half laughingly, half, you know, crying, think about when we started 2020, mm. we were 100% yeah. booked for the year. You thought you yeah. were busy mid-2018, 2019, and now 2021 yeah. is looking even crazier than a normal year yeah. would yeah. otherwise. Yeah. So the programming, so the, the window where things are getting scheduled is significantly shorter right now. So always check back on our website because that's the place where as soon as things are scheduled as soon as things are under contract that's where it goes and you know there there may be times where we're one to two months away from something and and, and a program gets added so we don't want you to miss out on it just because you think that uh that you've checked it out and there isn't anything coming. Do you have uh, an email list or a newsletter that people can sign we up do. for to get? We do. And the best way to do that is through the website. And then it's at the very top. It's, you know, it gives you information on how you can join our newsletter. Once you input your information there, it'll automatically add you to the newsletter. And then click the little bell on Facebook and get notifications. Exactly. Every time you make a post on Facebook, you'll get a little yes. notification that exactly. says the Barnes of Brazil has posted a new event. Exactly, and exactly. I, I think that, you know, one thing I want to say too that, that people may or may not know is that we're, we're a small, you know, relatively small uh, art center or in a small town and people don't always expect this, but we are kind of a routing venue for bigger DC venues like the Hamilton and mm -hmm. Barnes and Wolf Trap and, and, and even like Mountain Stage. We have a bunch of musicians coming through here before they go to play Mountain Stage. So we really pride ourselves on, on doing really world-class concerts as well as, you know, great local, you know, so we're really focused in both, you know, our local community and then we have touring artists that come through as well. So it's a great place to you know, not drive all the way to D.C. to have to catch a band. You might very well be able to see him here. I had that conversation with Dennis Lynch a few weeks ago when he was talking about the Shenandoah Valley Music Festival. And a lot of the artists that he's able to book is because of that very thing that you just talked about. They're going to be somewhere within a couple of hours That's exactly of right. where he is. And he's able to snag them because of logistics, yeah. not always because of availability. <laughs> That's exactly right. Exactly right. Yeah. So I want to make sure we touch before we wrap up on the big 10th anniversary celebration. When is it? Where is it? Yep. And and more importantly, how free is it? <laughs> <laughs> it's free, 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 free. Yeah. It is July 31st, and it is um, going to be from 5 to 9 p.m. in the evening. It's kind of Rose Hill Park, kind of in between the barns of Rose Hill and the municipal building here in Berryville. If anybody's familiar with that area, it's a big field mm -hmm. um, right there. Parking, probably best to go to the municipal building for parking. And it is free because we've got some amazing corporate sponsors, Bank of Clark County, who's always one of our hu yes. huge supporters Edward Jones Jordan Liskey who is here in town he is another one who's been a great supporter of the Barnes for the last couple years we've also got the Seagal group out of Baltimore Maryland who is a, a corporate sponsor this year and tons and tons of other folks so uh, we are th very thankful as always for our corporate support and and yeah because even the ice cream's free <laughs> mm -hmm. you can't get so, wrong with free ice cream and, so. and we have food trucks trucks too they are not free but if you you know come hungry because we have some really great food trucks coming and you bring up a good point when you talk about Jordan Liskey too Sarah because I think sometimes people forget that people can support the Barnes of Rose Hill. It doesn't have to be a business or a large corporation. I can be a benefactor in Absolutely. some way mm -hmm. to promote and help you grow what's going on here at the Absolutely. Barnes. Absolutely. Absolutely. And you know, one of the great things about being the size that we are is because we're sort of small, but not too small and um, big enough to be able to attract some really great, you know, really great performers and stuff like that. One of the cool things about that is that we are also able to re really appreciate and rely on the support in so many different ways. So obviously our corporate supporters are wonderful and they're very helpful as always. Uh, we get a lot of our money through our, our donors. Mm -hmm. So individual donors, you know, the Barnes of Rose Hill in a normal year, we're only looking at about 30 to 35% of our operating budget actually comes from ticket sales. So it has to come from somewhere. somewhere. 
somewhere. <laughs> yeah. And we, you know, we, we also serve as the visitor center for Berryville and Clark County. And so that is, you know, that's funded and is uh, staffed through the Barnes and Rose Hill. So there, there's definitely, um, you know, as any nonprofit, as any small nonprofit, you know, we do rely so heavily on those donations, but donations, ticket sales, memberships, you know, helping us spread the word. All um, of those things. Of Check those all things. of those boxes. Yeah, it's 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 really important. And it's what makes this place so special because we have that wonderful community of supporters. Yeah, and just if, if everybody listening, you know, instead of buying just two tickets, if they just, you know, take one friend, you know, drag one friend along to, you know, an event, that really helps us It's amazing, that, yes, the, the ripple effect that yes. that has. Because so, once you come, Oh, you're, you're gonna be yeah, back. you're gonna yeah. be back. Yeah, that's that, that's that's a non-issue. Right. So barnesofrosehill.org, best first place to start. Get on the email list, become a donor, say you want to volunteer, find out what all the events are. Everything starts with that website. Absolutely, everything is on the website, and then we hope to see everybody on the 31st because it's going to be a heck of a party. We're excited. Awesome. Well, ladies, thank you for inviting me over to the barns to have yeah. this conversation Thanks today. For coming and doing this, this is great. I will be back tomorrow. I will have a brand new episode of The Valley today ready to go for you a few minutes afternoon. I can't tell you who it is because I haven't recorded it yet. So you're going to have to wait and find out tomorrow. I'll meet you back here then.